Hello, I'm Chris Tonkel. Uh, I am part of the MS Agronomy program at Iowa State, uh, which is a program that allows you to earn your master's degree while working. So, uh, myself, I work for Keystone Cooperative here in Indiana. Uh, and for my creative component, uh, as part of graduating with this master's degree, uh, you kind of get to pick and choose what you want to do. So for mine, I wanted to do uh, drones in agriculture, kind of how they are here in, currently in 2024, uh, along kind of cover some of the advantages, disadvantages, uh, and the safety and protocols that are, are involved with it. So when you kind of look at the advantages of using drones in agriculture, one of the first things that kind of comes to mind is being able to use it for scouting. So for us, uh, with our co-op, uh, a lot of our interns actually get drones at the beginning of the summer and they use them to go out and scout. Uh, a lot of farmers are also starting to use them. Uh, kind of the interesting piece with that is it allows them to see a different angle of the field. So uh, for me, myself, I have actually been able to use one to go out there and see uh, that a tile line was broken. So when you're actually looking out on the field, uh, you can see, you know, there's actually a wet spot in that area that you also have the ability to know, hey, is there a weedy patch in the field? So it gives you a different angle of the field to actually be able to go out there and see. Uh, another piece that the farmers have actually used it to uh, check on some of their buildings or grain bins after storms to check if there's any damage with actually risking themselves going to that uh, elevation. Uh, another piece that kind of is more of the, the research side of things is using thermal imagery uh, to detect if there's tar spot. That is kind of on a really early portion of research, but it's an interesting topic with drones. Another piece on the scouting piece of side of things is the use of AI. So there's several companies out there right now um, that are using drones, they're able to take imagery or video, then when that comes back in, they're actually able to run it through uh, their own platform of software, whatever it is that they're using, and then they can um, check and see, hey, does this field have a nutrient deficiency or is there weeds present um, that they can then relay that to the grower. It gives kind of a whole field scouting without having to you know, walk hundreds of acres. It also allows you to just reach a larger number of acres. So say if you're walking on your feet, you can only do a couple fields a day where if you have a drone, you have potentially the ability to cover thousands of acres in a day. Uh, and then on the other side of that is there's actually the spray components to drones. Over the last couple years, we've started to see um, that technology be out there to where we can spray. So with a spray drone, we actually have the ability to get better coverage and access to acres that never saw uh, you know, fungicide before. So uh, with a plane, when it's coming through the field or a helicopter, a lot of times it can't get the very start in the backside of the field as it's swooping through. Um, so this, with a drone, you actually can get full coverage of the entire acre. And then as you're going through it, you also have the ability uh, to push the product down into the canopy. So uh, drones on the advantage side of things have a, a lot of things that maybe we haven't been able to see in the past that we do now. Uh, so it's a really neat part to the agriculture that we're seeing today. As I mentioned, there are different AIs and softwares out there that drone companies are using to analyze the data that they get back. So this is one of the ones that we actually used this year. So this is Tyrannus. What it does is they go out and scout fields for us using the imagery on the camera and then bring it back and run all that data through their proprietary system to uh, it during the beginning of the year, they'll get a stand counts and weed checks. And then as we get later into the season, we'll also start to get some insects, disease and nutrient ratings. So this is one of the fields that we used as a test to be able to get data back, to be able to show to potential customers. Um, so as we go down here to the bottom of the bottom, if I click on this research demo, you'll see all uh, six flights that we had. And it gives you kind of a reading as you go through the season uh, of where some things change within the field. If I go to this map view, um, we'll actually see, uh, we can see some of the data again from all those different flights. So for this one, we're going to go to the nutrition. And we'll see there's a couple sections in the field that it's reading that it thinks it saw something. So if we click that, we'll actually get an in-depth image where we can click and see what it thinks it saw out there. So in this case, it's saying we had nitrogen deficiency in this field. Uh, we can also go and look at, hey, were there any weeds in the field? So in this case, it's picking out that there was one spot. So you can see it gets all the way down into the canopy. In this case, it's saying it's actual cockleburs out there in the field. So if we actually go all the way back early into the season, We'll go to the sec second flight and go to weeds. And then you have the ability to scroll through some of the different available options out within that field. 
So in this case, we've got another one that's showing and saying we got morning glory. So uh, all this is the ability, they have the ability when they go fly the field, uh, they're able to capture the imagery and then run it through their software. And it provides us information back saying what is out there in the field. So some of the disadvantages of using drones in agriculture is the scalability of things. So to actually be able to out, go out and fly, whether it be for a company or even for yourself, is you have to acquire a Part 107 license, which is essentially from the FAA that says, hey, I am allowed to go do this. Uh, to get that certification, um, while there are a lot of different uh, options available online to help you study for that, it is uh, essentially a lot of portions of becoming an actual pilot as if you were a plane. There's a lot of that aspect to it. So it does require studying and it requires time to get that license. And then also just the scalability of getting enough pieces of equipment, getting trailers, um, getting everything that we would need to actually set up an operation if you wanted to go full scale. Um, the time requirement also. So when it does become fungicide season, which is generally one of the main applications, specifically with a spray drone, um, is it can be multiple weeks at time that you're continually running that operation. So there is a, there can be a time requirement uh, with actually running the operation. Um, then you also have weather. You are weather dependent on when you can fly. So it's not great if you're trying to run a drone in the rain, similar to any other application. And then uh, you also have to take into a, a effect like heat. So heat can actually be one of the uh, more detrimental things to a drone um, as you're trying to fly. Battery life can be impacted by that and the actual motors on um, the drone itself. Uh, and then another thing to think of is line of sight. So with the drone and part of that 107 license um, is actually being, you have to be able to see the drone as you are flying it. So a lot of times if you do see somebody applying, you'll see them on an elevated surface so that they actually can see uh, the drone. So a lot of times that is gonna require another piece of equipment. In this case, generally some type of trailer or something that gets you up in the air. So um, while they're not huge disadvantages, they are things to think of as you, if you wanted to get into um, the agricultural business whether that be for scouting or spraying. So lastly, there is safety. So uh, one of the interesting things with drones is they actually have the ability to reduce risk in some situations. So um, in the case of like an airplane as it's going over the field, it generally actually has to be at a lot higher uh, elevation off of the field itself. So with the drone, you have the ability uh, to go up to 400 feet, but generally when you're doing an application, you're actually gonna be into that 20 to 40 feet range. So you have the ability to put most of the product closer and down into the canopy. So you're generally in most cases, not always, but you have a ability to actually reduce the risk of uh, drift. Um, and then because you have to get a part 107 and if you are applying for like a company that part 137 um, you know anybody that's generally applying has the certification so um, while it can take time to get that certification it is somewhat of a reassurance you know that anybody is is applying should have uh, the right registration and understanding of what they are doing um, and then going back to that, you know, it reduces the ability to potentially have to go up and see something. So it reduces that risk, whether it be for the farmer or somebody at a co-op, uh, somebody that's scouting, it has the ability to reduce the risk of actually having to go up onto that elevated surface. So generally on a, from a safety standpoint, uh, in agriculture, there aren't too many uh, items out there due to you opening out in an open situation as compared to if you were flying a drone in the city where there is a lot more uh, safety and concerns there. In an agricultural setting, uh, for the most part, if it does go down, it's going down in a field, so you don't have as much to worry about with it hitting somebody or something. And then some just last second items to th consider, um, depending on your situation, could be both an advantage or a disadvantage, um, is the cost to run a drone. So a drone can cost anywhere from, you know, 50 bucks at your local Walmart to uh, $40,000 when you consider buying a fully set up spray drone. Um, so that is just something to consider, but when comparing that to whether it be a half million dollar um, high clearance ground rig or, you know, paying for a plane, uh, there's a lot of different factors to consider there. Depending on the situation, it can be both an advantage or a disadvantage. Um, the other thing to consider is the amount of acres that can be covered in a day. So with that spray drone, for example, um, while it does have the ability to get into those, you know, wooded tree lines that you necessarily couldn't get in there with, whether it be a helicopter or a plane, um, it's awesome to be able to get it on those acres that have never seen it before. It does take a little bit more time. You know, you might be closer to that 400 acres a day, whereas something the plane is going to be a thousand.
plus. So you have to understand the time uh, ratio there of understanding, you know, how much can I get done in a day. Uh, and then the lifespan of the drone. So that's all kind of dependent on how you treat them and how many hours you run them for them in the setup that you have. Um, there's several people that are still running uh, T40s this year that ran them last year. You know, they've gone through two full uh, summers of applying and they're still going. So you've also seen some that have crashed and broke. So that life scan can be really dependent on um, how things are going there. Um, those are kind of three things that can both be advantage, disadvantage, depending on your situation, but are something to consider if you wanted to use a drone in agriculture. Really hope you've enjoyed uh, the information that I've been able to provide on drones and kind of how they stand in agriculture here today in 2024. Uh, what's really neat with that though is this is a really fast paced environment and you know, some of this information may be changed a lot in the next five years. So drones is still a really new part to agriculture and we're gonna see a lot of advancements over the next five, 10, 15 years. So it's really interesting to see kind of how this goes. I hope you've enjoyed this information uh, and I hope you can continue to learn more about this.